Hi, okay, so sterilization. Tom Fisher here. Um, this will be the down and dirty eye project sterilization. And you know, this is just, I mean, this is the most bare bones basic as far as what you need to do with sterilization. The biggest thing we need to remember is that we're in the field. We don't, we don't compromise on what we're doing with instruments. They need to be sterilized. What we do in the States, what we do anywhere else is the same thing as we do. And so it's important, I think, for me, when I see people walk into an OR, though, is that you make sure you use proper terminology. Um, one of the things that we get guilty of when we have people that are volunteers that come into an OR, um, we start throwing the words around sterilization, something that's sterile, something that's clean, something that's disinfected, and people don't, people don't differentiate those appropriately. And it's really important for us to make sure that we do. So I just have those down. Um, you know, we clean everything. We have to clean things before we sterilize them, before we disinfect them. And so that's the most important thing. Um, uh, and so, you know, remove all the garbage, all the yucky stuff. The lid speculums, of course, are the worst thing. And then, of course, anything that's got an orifice in it. Um, disinfecting things when we're, when we're preparing the OR2, you know, using the chemicals and those kind of things. Uh, particularly alcohol, just to clean things down and disinfect. Um, but again, disinfecting is not sterilizing, so make sure you, I, I think it's worthwhile. We pro I, I've never actually done that, but probably to sit down, people will know OR and say, okay, let's just make sure we define these. Um, and then sterilizing, we actually destroy things. Um, and we always validate our sterilization with, uh, with, um, uh, test strips of some sort, some test indicators to go. So that's why I said death to all. It kills everything, including spores, including viruses. Um, and sterilization is always our goal. And there's different ways that you can do that. So a general autoclave, the kind that's set on the, you know, that we use on the desktop, which we're probably most familiar with. Statums are flash sterilizers, um, which are very helpful. Hot air ovens we've used, um, those things can really be hard on your instruments um, uh, as well. And then, of course, using chemical. If you're at a clinic where you are going to be somewhere long term, chemical actually is a pretty nice way to go because they'll take these um, ethylene oxide, in particular. I know I've seen places where they just get an old refrigerator and then, you know, they get the instruments wrapped, they put a test indicator in them and then they have a whatever capsule or whatever they release inside there, and it takes, I don't know how long it takes, I think it's a 12 or 24 hour process, but when that thing's done, that you know, you've got them sterilized and it permeates everything. So anything that you've got inside your wrap packs, whether it's um, if you have, um, you know, plastic bags that you use, foam, anything, it does a good job of sterilizing all that stuff. So. If you're someplace where you can do that, that's cool. For us, where we go in and need to sterilize things, that's just not very practical. It doesn't make any sense for us to do that. But if you're going to sterilize packs and stuff, that can be helpful. So things you want to bring. Um, um, if you're going to do autoclave, whatever you're going to do, you, you have to sterilize those things in some sort of packs. Um, notice it says in parentheses that uh, I forgot towels once very first project we went on, I had all my instruments and uh, we were using autoclaves and I didn't bring any towels to wrap things in. <laughs> it was a learning curve. Unfortunately, we were working at a hospital that had plenty of towels to wrap things in and so we, uh, we were okay there. Sterilization validation test indicators are just essential. I don't uh, sterilize anything without putting an indicator in it. Uh, I mean, I've seen people go, well, we'll do it on every other one. Well. I only want every other one to be sterile. I mean, for us, it's important that we be objective about what we do, and we don't want to drop our standards when we're overseas than what we would do in the States. So everyone gets it. Um, sterile table drapes, and that's something for us because it's convenient when we're in an OR that we use a back, a back table um, that has a sterile field on it where we can take extra product and set it there and pull off there. Um, something that I think is... Uh, 
important too is you know you have to be careful about cross contamination and once you've started a case and I've got a I've got a mail tray in front of me you don't want to um, reach back and grab something if you've broke essentially you know your contamination from a patient um, that makes sense yeah, does that make sense um, okay instrument cleaning you know if you have to flush things I bring I try to bring little wires for cleaning out the orifice if you get a bunch of nuclear stuff in your Simcoe um, because that can be problematic. Um, enzymatic cleaner can be helpful if you have uh, stuff, because that has a tendency to eat that garbage out of the cannulas too sometimes. Um, but whatever it takes, brushes, particularly toothbrushes, I always carry a toothbrush with me, and then I have something to clean my teeth and my instruments. Um, so that's important. Um, Bring your thinking cap and readiness for unplanned or things unpredicted. Uh, I don't exactly know why I stuck that quite in there. I suppose when uh, when uh, something breaks, I had my statum break in the middle of Sierra Leone because anyway, so it was an issue of taking my Leatherman out, taking the thing apart, finding where it came apart, put it back together. Those are just the unexpected things you have to deal with. Um, and uh, when we set up the OR, and this is not sterilization, but that's just disinfecting, of course, you want to do what you normally do. Once you've got it set up, then take your alcohol or your acetone. Alcohol is best because acetone is pretty volatile as far as that's concerned. It just stinks terrible. Make sure you wipe down all your instruments and your scopes and your beds and your mail, uh, you know, your mail stands um, and your IV poles, all that stuff, just like you're, you would do uh, at home. Um, and it, uh, surgical, surgical scrub soaps and sponges too for hand scrubs. Those are sometimes things you you wind up without, but uh, they can be helpful to have if you don't if you don't have them. Logistics: uh, be thoughtful about the process. Uh, processes to be in any location. Um, Yeah, so depending upon sterilization, turnaround time is really one of the things. Um, we were talking about that earlier. If, if my sterilization process, um, I'm going to be using a hospital's uh, bulk sterilization, um, and turnaround time is going to be two hours or however long it takes them to run that thing, then you're going to have to have a lot more instrument sets than if you're using a statum where your turnaround time is five minutes. So that can be a big deal. So just make sure that whatever you use, you know you have a proper proper time to um, keep your surgeons going because you don't want your surgeon sitting around going, okay, I'm waiting for an instrument here any day now. That can really be painful, um, very painful. So um, the desktop units that, that do general, you know, like a dental unit, those things that are 35 or 45 minutes, pretty good. And if you do that, um, Three sets are optimal. Two sets almost always work, depending upon how fast you turn around the OR, but um, how fast your surgeon is. Um, but that's a that's an important thing to consider when you're doing that. Um, and again, I had down here local supplies can also dictate your processes. So the availability of dependable electricity, because if you don't have electricity, then you're like, what am I going to do here? For the most part, we don't really have other options. Um, we flew into the jungle a couple times with Anderson. We knew we weren't going to be doing a lot of cases, so we used our microscope for, um, we used our solar power um, units for lighting our microscope, and then we had just enough cases that we used the sets we did. We did that many cases, and we were done. So I didn't actually have to sterilize sets when we were out there. Um, but that's, you know, so that's one way you can do um, the other thing is, and, but that's like a, just a one-day fly in and come out kind of thing. Um, otherwise, the only other option when you're out in the bush like that is to do a high disinfect, not actual sterilization, and boil. Boil's about the only thing you can do when you get out there like that. Um, boiling, however, does not kill spores. So you want to, um, that's not optimal, obviously. Um, 
Yeah, right. So when you're out there, availability, when uh, just the stuff that you have, there are places where you just can't get some things. If you're using water for your autoclave, um, you don't really want to have to carry that across the country. So it's nice to know in advance things you have to have because they're not going to be available where you're at. Um, uh, yeah, you don't want to have to carry water at all if it's possible. But it happens, meaning sometimes you have to. So same kind of thing here, OR preparation is important. Uh, you need to facilitate the surgical flow, prevent contamination. So make sure that you don't have your sterile field set and where your people are coming right in so they're going to run into it. And when you're transporting dirty instruments out, you don't want to be, um, you want to have a path that's not going to cause you to contaminate anything as well. Um, I guess I mentioned the pre-surgical cleaning. Um, something that is really helpful, and you know, um, uh, I, th I meant if Clark mentioned it, somebody mentioned it earlier about having somebody that's responsible for doing dial. Oh, Steve Anderson mentioned about having somebody do the dilation, somebody that's reliable that knows what's going to happen. Um, that's really true, meaning it's helpful to have somebody who's dedicated to do dilation so that you know it happens and they just that's their job and it makes the day flow. That's the same thing is true for sterilization. Because if you don't have somebody that's doing that, you'll wind up going, uh, did you start those instruments? <laughs> and then you can wind up being in trouble. I think the smoothest time I've seen that happen without somebody dedicated was the last, the time you and I are in Ecuador because you and I just, but we just knew from experience that when we took something, we put on sterilizer, so we were right there. So if you got Clark, Clark and Tom, you're okay. But otherwise, my wife was in charge this past year all she did was sterilize instruments. We brought them to her, she put them in, she took them out, and we never had one iota of a problem. So yeah, that's my wife, Jody. Um, oh, be mindful of your surrounding junk Padawan because you are not in Kansas anymore. You know, the, the only reason I said that is just because th that's more of our, square, our, our scleral, our, oh my gosh. That's more the fact that when we're scrubbed in, we do things differently because we're not gowned up often. And we're not in an OR where we go, okay, everything from my waist down I can't touch, but everything else I've got covered in sterile. That's not really instrument sterilization, but that's, that's a whole conversation about, um, about sterile technique. Um, 